won't you stand with us if you're here today in this place? Stand up with us. We're going to worship God this morning, and we're just so excited for the presence of God and how he comes every time we just lift him up. And so, we, uh, Father, we love you this morning. We love you for who you are, not just for what you give. And we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun, who the sun sets free Oh, he's free
worship leader and I was like God but I don't feel this I, I don't I don't I don't feel I don't feel the healing of the heart I don't even feel your presence here and he said to me sing what you want to see see this is called faith we're not just singing in vain hope that God might come or that he might be good enough to forgive sin or he might be strong enough to turn things around we're singing and declaring who he is. We're coming into line, into agreement. The power. 
power of agreeing with who God is. He's the way maker. Even when I don't feel it, even when I don't see it, I know that he doesn't change just because of my circumstance. And so can we sing that this morning just as we declare his name? I want to encourage you, even if you don't see it today, even if you don't feel it today, just begin to declare who he is in this place. I call you way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, we agree with you today, Yahweh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. you're working even when I don't see it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I can't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working Promise keep light in the darkness. Yeah, this is who you are. I call you way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, this is who you are. My Jesus, thank you, Abba. Father, we lift up our hearts to you this morning. Right where we are in this place. Ancient of days, we honor you for who you are. You've never failed. You've never come up short. We love you. We worship you. Mm -hmm. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Wonderful name it is. 
What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Come on, say this with me today. Death could not hold you. Hey, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens, the heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing compares to this what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. Come on, the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again, and you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is, and yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. And what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, Woo! no other name. I don't know about you guys, but part of finishing up the year strong requires knowing what a beautiful name his name is, what a powerful name his name is. And I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to finish this year strong as we press in. 
to all that God has called us to do to finish this year strong, but as we press into 2023 and beyond. If you guys believe that this morning and are excited, can we please give Rebecca and our worship team a huge round of applause. And do me a favor. When you high five someone this morning, tell them, declare, speak. When you speak, right? We got to speak things into existence. When we speak them, it's for others to hear, for God to hear. Tell somebody else that you are going to finish this year strong and you guys may be seated. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to welcome our online family and community. Welcome. My name is Joseph Mendoza. I am the lead of our Family Strong Ministry, and I'm excited that you chose to join us this morning. So whether you're watching online, our website, YouTube, Facebook, share because you care. Let your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your loved ones know that we have a special message for you today from Pastor Tim's story about finishing the year strong and doing all that God has called you to do to finish strong this year. So share because you care. Let's each one reach one. And for those of you in the house, we reach over 2,500 people online each and every Sunday. If you guys think that's amazing, we should clap right now and give the Lord a clap for our online family and community. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joseph Mendoza. I'm the lead of our Family Strong Ministry, and we are excited that you all joined us this morning. If today is your first time, if it's your first time online, put in the chat section, I'm new. Someone will reach out to you, I promise. So welcome to any first-time guests that are watching online this morning. If you're in the house today, we would love to meet you after service. My great friend, Jennifer J. Lewis, she will be under the tent. Yes, that's Jennifer. Uh, we have a white bag with the gift that we would love to give to you guys. So if today is your first day, I just want to say welcome home. Thank you for choosing and joining the congregation family this morning. I would love to meet you after service. The pastors would love to meet you. Stop by and pick up your gift. So welcome to our first time guest online or in the house today. I got quite a bit of announcements, you guys, but that's great because that means we're up to a lot of amazing things as we're finishing the year strong. So I'm going to start off with my uh, first announcement that I have today is our Thought Leaders event. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Thought Leaders is, that is our marketplace ministry. That is for entrepreneurs, marketplace individuals. There may be a slide up above me, and there is. Awesome. We live in the world and society of QR codes. So if you would like to find out more information, you can just use your camera, hit that QR code. But we have our first event, you guys, and we are super excited. Pastor Stefan, Pastor Tim, Pastor Paige, my great friend Chris, who was sitting in the front row here a second ago, but he vanished. Uh, myself, we are hosting our first Marketplace Ministry event. I see him to my left over here. That is Saturday, you guys. Uh, Saturday, that is January 14th at 10 a.m. And it's going to take place right here in this same auditorium. And we have two amazing special guests that Pastor Tim, uh, Pastor Stefan, and Chris will be interviewing that day. We have our great friend, Caitlin Crosby, who is the owner and CEO of The Giving Keys, which is actually amazing, you guys. I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Caitlin runs a jewelry company where they make these awesome, amazing little keys. My wife probably has hers on. I just don't see it. But really what her mission and vision is, is to help end homelessness Excuse me, in L.A. So every key that is purchased or piece of jewelry, a portion of it goes back to helping with the homelessness in L.A. So Caitlin will be with us. And then also we have our very good friend that we were fortunate to meet through Pastor Tim. We have Pastor Maxim Asinov from Bulgaria, you guys, will be here with us. Yes, let's give Pastor Maxim a clap. And Pastor Maxim, if you're watching, we love you. He has an amazing church in Bulgaria. Pastor Tim has been there several times to minister. He will be out here as a part of his book tour, and he is going to be a part of our special Thought Leaders event that Saturday. So don't wait. Get your tickets today. You can scan the QR code. You can buy them right now from your seats. Uh, next up, you guys, we have our Christmas party. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for the Christmas party. So our Christmas party, there should be a slide behind me. There we go. So we're on cue today. Our Christmas party will take place, you guys, Sunday, December 11th. Sunday, December 11th. It'll take place at 12 noon. It is going to be a lunch. It'll be at Black Gold Country Club. 
which if you guys don't know, it literally, Pastor Paige, is like 1.2 miles just up above us right here. So it is not far. So we're going to have a short, condensed Sunday service, and then we're going to transition to the Christmas party. Uh, moms and dads, it is for everybody. It is for our little world shakers. It is for friends. It is for family. We want you guys to sponsor a table if you can. And Pastor Paige, correct me if I'm wrong. If we sponsor a table today, are they getting Pastor Tim's signed book still? So if you sponsor a table today, which should be 50% of you sponsor a table today, you're going to get, I see Pastor Tim's books right over there by Jennifer J. Lewis that are already signed. If you sponsor a table today, you will get his comeback and beyond book sign. That is his bestseller. Oprah helped him with that book right there. That's amazing. Tickets, you guys, 55 for adults, I believe. Yes, 55 for adults, 25 for kids. That includes a full buffet lunch, you guys, but... It's more about the relationships. It's more about the fellowship that's going to take place at the Christmas party, you guys. So please be sure to sign up today. Immediately after service, you can see Jennifer. You can see myself. You can see any of us staff members outside, and we can get you your tickets today. We have physical tickets, so when you pay, we're going to hand you physical tickets. Okay? This won't be through a QR code, so you will get your physical Christmas party tickets today. So don't miss out. I want to see us all there. And remember, step out and invite somebody. Invite somebody you never know. Their life can be changed just by attending one Christmas party, you guys, and seeing just the love for Jesus in them, you guys, and the way Jesus sees them. Uh, next up, you guys, we have our vision fund update. I just want to thank you guys, but we also want to give you an update on our vision fund. Can we please give a big clap that we have already received... $93,866 as of November 25th. The reason why I'm talking about this is because we want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving. You know, Pastor Tim talks about some of us give out of our sacrifice and some get up, give out of our surplus, you guys. So thank you for being a part of our vision fund as we continue to press into 2023 and beyond. And the last date, the deadline is December 15th to fulfill your pledges. So a lot of you have pledges out there, are making payments, maybe have a balance due. December 15th is the last day to fulfill that pledge. But if you say, hey, Joseph, maybe I wasn't here. I didn't get a chance to be a part. You definitely can still give and be a part of our vision fund today. One of our ushers can give you guys a card. If anybody wants a vision card, you can just raise your hand. Chris or Brad will hand those out. If not, you can see me after service, and I will make sure that we get you a vision fund card. So once again, thank you for sowing in to the congregation family and all that God has us doing here as we press into the new year. Uh, I'm going to bring Pastor Page up. I have one more announcement. So if we can please give Pastor Page a huge round of applause. And, uh, you know, I'm not part of the Share Connect ministry team, but uh, I was getting some pictures sent to me yesterday awesome of an pictures. amazing event yesterday that took place in Newport Beach. So, Pastor Paige, can you share with everybody a little bit? Because I've already asked Melissa, I've asked several women who attended yesterday. I said, how was yesterday? And the words that came out of their mouth was, it was absolutely amazing. Well, the room, you know, we were at the Villas in Fashion Island. A nice okay. place. Super nice. And uh, I won't say who lives there, but it was nice. And, uh, and it was overlooking the main swimming pool and it had a big fireplace. And so we're going to continue. We're going to take that room now. It's our hey. room. And I heard you had a special guest speaker yesterday. Yeah. So Tim showed up. Hey, give him a big clap. Mark, can you give me a little more feedback on mine? Yeah, so uh, that was awesome, Tim. Thank you for doing that. And it was great. It was great timing that you came on because, uh, you know, Tim is always so uplifting, right. and he gave us a great word. He spoke about 12 minutes, and then I came in and gave a, a, a testimony. Um, so many people were healed yesterday. I don't know if you guys know, but we've been praying a lot for the sick. Yes. And, uh, and Hannah was healed from ovarian cancer. Can you give <laughs> Hannah a big... We prayed for her on Sunday. She went to UCI on Monday, and the cancer was completely gone. Praise we, Jesus. Yeah, come on. 
And we've also been praying for other women and men with cancer and other um, diseases. And uh, we are getting tremendous reports and process. So this church is a believing church. Right. We're going to continue to pray for you on Sundays, um, you know, at the altar calls. And so, you know, just be prepared. Bring your friends and family to the fam to congregation family because we're going to be praying for you and praying for them. Okay? Give the Lord a big shout Amen. for that. Pastor Paige, real quick. For maybe some of the ladies who weren't there, do we know when the next Share Connect event will so be? So I have decided uh, by popular demand, we're going to do uh, a Connect once a month. Once a month, ladies. So yeah. listen, once a month. Once a month. And it will be in Fashion Island uh, at the Villas. Not a bad place yeah. to meet we're once a month. We're not going anywhere else. It's just, not a bad place. You'll be comfortable, and it's really, really fun. So we want to do that. I also want to bring up, now, if you reserve a table for your family today, you don't have to pay for it today. You can reserve it. You will get a signed book, The Miracle Mentality by Tim Story. So hey, you want to do that. Reserve now, your table. We like to see, Joseph, everyone here at our Christmas right. party. Yes. Why? Because we need to celebrate each other. And we need to celebrate. And, you know, I want to see your dancing moves, people. You know, and so, and I'm, I'm even trying to talk Tim into, we're going to maybe do a little dance together. Him and I, I can. I, I don't know if anybody could top your dancing moves, yeah, though, Pastor Paige. No. I, I don't know. You know, we're, we're from the 70s, the 80s. We do Motown. We do, you know, Smokey Robinson. So we want to do that for you. So if you want to see us dance, come on out. I tell you this, it's worth it, you guys. I, I <laughs> I'd pay $55 to see that, you guys. You know, rumor has it Tim won a dance contest back in junior high, so we want to see those new and improved yeah, moves and, and, over and, there. No, but I was told last night, because I went to Martha Sanchez, and I got, and I danced at Martha Sanchez's house last night. Any video footage of Paige dancing at yeah, Martha Sanchez's yeah, it'll last night? it'll be on Instagram. Night. But I'm telling you, so I had many comments today said, my God, my God, you dance better than your brother. Uh, yeah. I, I think I think he might have something to he might have something to say about that as I pass the microphone to him right now. I th I think it was because I was in the clubs longer than you. That is true. I pulled you out of many clubs. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but is it going to be fun for the Christmas party? Yeah, Christmas party is going to be great, and it's always super crowded. And I love the fact that they bring a lot of guests. Yes, and they the bring kids. a lot of guests. Yeah, and then we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a guest of Santa Claus is gonna be. Yeah, you know. and we really do dance. We do. Yeah, because I think dancing's yeah. good. Yeah, so we're gonna do and that. And then congratulations on what you did with the women yesterday. That was like at a high level. Awesome. All right. Very cool. But I wanted to make that plug, and I wanted to introduce you. So yes. I can't wait to hear your message, and you're gonna do the tithing offering. Yes. Give Pastor Paige okay. a big clap. All the way from uh, your Belinda. Thanks for making the drive. Okay, let's all stand up. Can we give Rebecca another big clap? She's one of the best anywhere. Hi, Rebecca. Uh, any, any song you feel like doing. And um, what I'm very, very excited about is this is my favorite time of year. How many of you um, enjoy Thanksgiving and then we get a little colder, then it, we go into Christmas? How many enjoy that? And I know there's a lot of things that trigger some of you because of we lost relatives or sometimes relatives are not present during Thanksgiving and Christmas. A lot of challenges. But look for the positive. Look for the miracle. Look for the breakthrough. I feel like today that God's going to give us some insight on how to finish up this year strong. In fact, I honestly believe that in a 30-day period, you could recoup losses that you had for 11 months. How many believe that God is that miraculous that he could help you get back things that you may have lost for 11 months? Okay. So I'm going to have you do my microphone a little louder if you could. And then what, what song are you thinking of doing, Rebecca? Okay. Beautiful. All right. Clap your hands. Let's go get it. We give you
that part. You are Alpha and what? You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha. And you're the Omega. And Omega. We worship you. You are worthy. And then we'll leave it right there. For 60 seconds, I want you just to close your eyes and let the Holy Spirit show you victories that you've had this last year. Let the Holy Spirit show you victories. It could be in your mindset, in your, in your family, in your finances, in anything that you were facing. Holy Spirit, illuminate these things to us and show us that you have brought a lot of victory to us. And I want us just to just take 30 seconds and just be thankful, be grateful. As we often say, you may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. We thank you, God, for how far we've come. Truly, truly, truly. I pray for everybody watching online, God, that you would heal people, change people, rearrange people, resurrect people. You are a miracle-working God. And everybody said, amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll bring you back at the end. You may be seated. We're going to do the tithe and the offering at the end. I want you to really take time to breathe in this message. I'm talking about finishing up strong. I want you just to say finishing up strong. I write in my notes that the end of the year is a time of reflection and reset. I want you to say reflection and reset. So many times when people look at the end of the year, they look at it as a time of regret, of I regret the fact that I did not make more money, I regret the fact that I gained pounds, I regret the fact that a relationship did not work, I regret the fact that I did not finish what I started. But the end of the year can be a time of reflection, but also of, of reset. The beauty of the end of the year is with God's grace and God's help, it's not the end of our life. It's just the end of a year. So I'm talking about finishing up strong. The word finish means to bring a task or activity to a desired end. That's to finish. It means to complete, to conclude, and to close out. 
So because I life coach people, that's a lot of my job. What I've found with many very powerful CEOs, male and female, that they who run big companies say, Tim, I'm great at starting, but I have a hard time finishing. Because in the beginning of something, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of hope. And there's a lot of intention. But in the middle of that goal, you're going to have delays. Say delays. You're going to have denials. Say denials. And then sometimes you're going to have detours. So how many of you wish that you got an even better shape this year? Just lift your hands. And don't lie in church. Okay. I would say that's all of us. How many of you wish that more of the goals that you set that you would have completed by now? Probably most of us, okay? So to finish is to bring to a task or activity to a successful end, to complete, to conclude, to close out properly. To finish up strong, the word strong means to finish energetic, to finish capable, to finish powerful, to finish big, so good. I love to study uh, marathons, and one of the things that you find is that, if you, were, you could Google this today, that the Kenyans from the country of Kenya, which I love, they win most of the marathons. And if they don't win, it's usually somebody they trained. You will never see a top Kenyan marathon runner who is being carried across the finish line. You don't see them crawling across the finish line. You see them coming across as though can I do some extra miles? <laughs> but it's interesting about the Kenyans is that they train different than most people. They call it running like a Kenyan, which I've done so much research on this, and I've spoken in probably 30 major companies about run like a Kenyan. So let me give you a couple things that they do to finish up strong. Number one, they train going uphill. On purpose, they train uphill. So one Kenyan that was um, interviewed said, when we finally get to the Boston Marathon, it's like running downhill. So I got good news for you. The reason you're going to learn how to run like a Kenyan, most of us all our lives have run uphill. So good. What do you mean by that? Trials, tests, stuff. Clap your hands if this makes sense already. You've been running uphill. Come on, you can handle stuff. The second thing about a Kenyan when they train is that they train on purpose on streets that are uneven. And so it's like rocky terrain where they train. And then they say this. They said, by the time we get on a good surface, it's easy. A lot of your childhood was living on a rocky surface. Your early teens, 20s, 30s, training on a rocky, rocky surface. I'm going to teach you why you're going to finish up strong. You, you, you guys have already been running like Kenyans. I'm just going to teach you how to execute. The third thing is that they train in extreme heat on purpose. Meaning... The temperatures are so, so strong. Again, they say when they get to the New York Marathon, the Boston Marathon, the London Marathon, the L.A. Marathon, they said the temperatures are usually mild. They said it's almost unfair. <laughs> wow. A, a lot of you were, were, were raised in scorching heat. The heat of an alcoholic father. 
the heat of a controlling mother. Such good teaching, right? The heat of who's in charge. The heat of what you created for yourself that was not smart. So they train going uphill. They train uneven grounds, extreme heat. Another thing is they train in high altitudes. So their breathing technique is so different that they say that when these people are getting winded at mile 16, 17, 18, they said, we have not even kicked in to third gear. Now, so I got into this deeper thing, and I've, I've interview, interviewed two famous Kenyan runners. And I said, said to them, I said, when I've been studying you guys for three years, I noticed that there is a look that the Kenyan runners give each other. I see you guys running in a pack. I said, what is the look? The look, the guy said, is run like a Kenyan. So at a certain mile, they look at each other like, bam, see you later. We're gone. Study it. Study it. Get it. Google it. They look at each other like, run like a Kenyan. I just got off the phone with my good friend Diane Hudson, who's probably watching now, executive producer of Oprah Winfrey for 23 years. It was Quincy Jones that told Oprah nine times, you got to get Tim. you got to be friends with Tim. Tim. Tim is the guy. He's unique. Then it was uh, Diane that put it all together. And she was just talking to me. I said, you know, there's a lot of people telling me that I should do this because Tony Robbins does this or I, I should do this because Gary Vee d does this. And she laughed. She says, that's pretty silly. <laughs> she says, you're, you're pretty much ruling in your own lane. And we look up to you. Bigger is not better. Grander is not better better. You guys better hear this. See, I think a lot of you, you are stronger than you think if you would, if you would stop comparing yourself to people that have nothing to do with what you're supposed to be about. And if I can get you to figure out what is your race, how should I race this race, come on, how do I train for this race that I run the best I can race, not the best that this guy did or this lady did or that person did, but you're going to be held accountable by God, not for what somebody else did, you're held accountable for what you do. So your goal this year is to finish up strong, powerful, big, energetic, and capable. Okay, now watch this. There's a difference between an assignment and an aspiration. Wow. Say assignment. Aspiration. An aspiration is an aim, an ambition, a desire, a dream, an endeavor. Watch. You watch TikTok and you see somebody fancy and they're on a yacht. And you think, I'd like to be on a yacht. That's an aspiration. Okay? You start doing well in business and someone gets an airplane. You say, I would like to get an airplane. I think I deserve an airplane. So that's an aspiration. You watch a TV show and someone talks to you about something you never heard in your life. A Birkin bag. Oh, my God. I would like a Birkin bag. That seems like that's worth $24,000 for leather. That's an aspiration. An aspiration is an ambition, a desire, a dream, or endeavor. I just want you to think about this. So in doing weeks of research for this, your mind is being more discipled by worldly thoughts, ideas, and aspirations than it is by God stuff. Because the average person who's a good follower of Christ, 
They're going to church maybe once a week if they do that. You, you listen to worship music sometimes. You might have the devotion that I read, Jesus Calling. You might go to breakfast and have a really good dialogue with somebody where you're building each other's faith. But in the world, you are nonstop being hit by all these aspirations that the world thinks that you should be a part of. This should be your ambition. This should be your aim. This should be your desire. This should be your dream. This is, should be your endeavor. Things to think about. An assignment, on the other hand, is a task, a job, an undertaking, a responsibility. Your challenge is that you have been given an assignment even if you don't know it. Wow, it's so good. So watch, I'm going to break down a lot of Bible. Isaiah 46, verse 9. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God, there is no one like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. Whew. Say, still to unfold. Okay, can I tell you why I have hope for you? Because you're still unfolding. If you're in your 20s, you're unfolding. In your 30s, you're unfolding. If you're in your 40s, you're unfolding. If you're in your 50s, you're unfolding. If you're in your 60s, you're unfolding. If you're in your 70s, you are unfolding. If you're in your 80s, you're unfolding. If you're in 90s, you're unfolding. Somebody clap your hands like you're still unfolding. Come on. <laughs> say, say it strong. Say, I'm still unfolding. <laughs> so I told you last week, I spent the night at my mom's house. And people say, why would a guy your age spend the night at your mom's house? Because I feel like it. And so I'm always asking my mother life coaching questions. So she's going to be 92 on March the 1st. So I said, scale scale of 1 to 10, mom, how happy are you? She says, a 9. I said, okay, what? why so high? She goes, I'm feeling good. Uh... I, I, I like how my kids are turning out. I said, what, what, what makes it a nine and not a 10? And she says, this is a true story. She started with this. She says, well, one, I can't drive. I'm like, it's like, obviously, my God, she was a scary driver at like 85. We like, <laughs> she goes, and then obviously, you know, your dad dying, your brother dying, your sister dying. That's brought a lot of pain to my life. But I said, but mom, seriously, a nine? She goes, yeah. I said, do you look forward to the future? She says, absolutely. So she's 91, and something in her is unfolding. But I'm going to teach you why today. Okay. From ancient times, what is still to come? Say, still to come. Then God says, I say my purpose will stand and I will do what I please. From the east, I summons a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man or a woman to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that will I bring about. Now, watch how powerful this is. This scripture, Isaiah 46, verse 9, which you should write down. I think it's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. It says this. That God is giving each one of you assignments, task, job, undertaking, responsibility. Who here is a parent? That's an assignment. Who here needs to make money? That's an assignment. Who here needs to take better care of themselves with their health? That's an assignment. Who here wants to have a healthy mindset? Lift your hands. That's an assignment. Who here is an American citizen? Lift your hand. That's an assignment. Look at me. Who here wants to make strong impact on this world? That's an assignment. Who here is a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's all an assignment. So I've been given assignments. But my aspirations 
are constantly going to challenge my assignments. So powerful. You, you could date somebody and they're full of aspirations and their aspirations start to challenge your assignments. Okay, watch how powerful. I'm just going to break down Bible. Proverbs 19.21 says this. Many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. Oh, man. People get a lot of plans. I'm so getting out of here. California is so crowded. The 10 freeway is a zoo. 405 totally is awful. I'm going to Nashville. <sighs> Do you know anybody in Nashville? Have you been there? You got friends? You got peeps? Well, I talked to my friend and the uh, taxes are just basically zero. The crime is basically zero. Everybody gets along with each other. Everybody knows each other's neighbors. This is a true conversation. I had with a lady on an airplane. <laughs> Nashville is awesome. I was there last week. They have human beings. If you have humans, you got problems. <laughs> Austin is cool too. A lot of you want to go to Austin. Austin's awesome. Austin's cool. Houston, Texas is cool. I used to have a house in the woodlands, one of the most prettiest places in America. That's cool. But the question is, look at this. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. The key word is prevail. As a pastor, I want you to prevail prevail. I want you to prevail. I want your finances to prevail. I want your mindset to prevail. I want your body to prevail. I want your relationships to prevail. Would you clap your hands that you want to prevail? But many are the plans in a person's heart. Is there anybody here that was, when you were a teenager, you thought of running away? Lift your hands. Wave, wave your hand high. I want to see. <laughs> okay. Look at all these runaways. <laughs> what kind of a church are we pastoring? A bunch of delinquents. A bunch of delinquents up in here. Okay. So I was studying this thing. You know, I like to study everything. So I was studying this thing about why a lot of children want to run away. Okay. Can I tell you what, what I found? So one of the reasons is that they don't feel understood. They don't feel understood. Oh, my God. My parents don't understand me. I'm so over this. I don't need this. I am 14. <laughs> they don't feel understood is one of the main reasons. The second one this should not be a shock, is they're in a relationship with someone and they decide to run away together. <laughs> How are we going to make it on love? <laughs> Look, you, I'm holding hands. <laughs> Sounds silly. Somebody just snorted. <laughs> I was so funny, a snort came out. I personally believe that we're like children, children of God, and we run away. We run away. Our father's not understanding us. We don't need this. 
Oh my God, I could so do it by myself better. Oh my God, I just went to the seminar. This guy was amazing. He's got his own airplane and he has his own island. You can't really see it on the map, but he owns it. <laughs> and now I'm following him and it's super awesome. Makes no sense. And then you get a partner. You get runaway partners, like you're all running away together. <laughs> Just say, I'm learning. Whew. Say, this is good teaching. Okay. Proverbs 27.1. Do not boast about tomorrow. For you do not know what tomorrow might bring. Wow. This world is full of boasters. Now, I'm going to confess. <laughs> this is an area that I've had to fight with. <laughs> because... When you're raised in a family where you're one step behind everybody and you're wearing your brother Randy's hand-me-down jeans, you're taking a bath in your brother's water. Come on. There's a loaf of bread and I would usually get the end of it to make my peanut butter jelly sandwich with only one piece of bread, but it's the end. How many of you know you don't like that? What do they call that? Okay. So, little Timmy gets a little ambitious. Start doing well. Start feeling myself. First time was in Little League Baseball. I got trained by an older guy who was seven years older than me. And I was a very good pitcher. I used to throw the ball so hard, you could hear it as a 12-year-old. So Paige you, you remembers this. She used to go to all my games. I used to scare the out of these little kids. I'd be sitting there at a big afro with my hat on top. I, I threw so freaking hard. And I was so accurate, I could throw it high and tight, scare the heck out of a kid, and the next pitch is drop a curve. And then I look at people like, shouldn't have got up, yo. <laughs> so all the, all, the, all the coaches loved me. And all the coaches wanted me. Because it was me, Don Kamatoski, Tim Montez, three best players in the league. I was just scaring everybody. So I had it made. All the coaches loved me. They, would, they, were, they were buying me licorice. So I was walking around with, with the toes of my jeans with a big thing of licorice hanging out. That was prosperity. So I would taunt kids at school, Roman. I would taunt them. This kid on the Pirates, we were going to play him for the playoffs. I said, you know, we're playing on Thursday for the playoffs. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I said, well, you better be nervous because I'm pitching. You should, you should get nervous. You should, don't, invite your, don't invite your relatives because you don't want to be embarrassed. And I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, he literally looks scared. I said, don't invite your relatives because I'm, I'm going to just dismantle you. And he literally, when he got up to bat, he was a good player. But he looked scared. He looked like, oh, my God, this guy is possessed by something. <laughs> okay. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Whew. So here's what happened to me. God opposes the proud. 
That's what happened to me. I fell on my butt so many times. I'd be like, I'm, I'm going to do. Woo, what you tell people, see? Bam, on my butt. Woo, we tell people, see? Boom, on my butt. Boom, falling again. Boom, falling again. Now, so then I had this therapist, Dr. Helen Mendez, who helped save my life, taught at USC, and I worked with Helen Mendez for 20 years, and she used to work with me on this boasting thing. She goes, now, Tim, nothing wrong with sharing your intentions with the right people. <laughs> but this other thing you're doing out of a lack, it's out of a lack, it's out of a vacuum. Do you love the honesty? And, and she says, and when you're boasting, and, and, and when you're putting people in their place, and you're telling people, you know, this is how it is, because I'm uber talented. You are working against the grace of God. God opposes. Whoa. Heavy. So, but she didn't just break me down like a lot of people wanted to, because I knew a lot of ministers who just wanted to break me like, that little chocolate guy, let's break him. <laughs> But Helen was patient, and she says to me, listen to me. She goes, you're very able. You're very capable. But you just need to shut up for a while. And I promise you, I went through a season where for five years I just shut up. Where people would say, what are you up to? Oh, my God, you are taking over the planet. I'd say, well, step by step. I'm just doing the best I can with what little God has given me. <laughs> Clap your hands like this is good teaching. Come on. Come on, keep on clapping. I'm trying to teach us. Somebody say, teach me. Okay. So in the book of James, chapter 4, it says something very, very interesting. I, I got to teach this to you out of the Bible so you can actually really get this. Okay. It says, now listen. Okay. Don't say tomorrow, I'm going to go to this city, or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why do you know, not even know, how do you know what will happen for tomorrow? It's the same idea of what we just read. What is your life? You are like a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes if you're not careful. My God. Instead, you ought to say, if it's God's will, we will live and do this, and we will live and do that. That's where I'm at in life. That's where I'm at. So people always bum rush me with amazing ideas. Oh my God, have I got an idea for you? You've totally got to take this and then they name a celebrity I know. You need to take it to them. Oh my God, you're going to make so much money. Blah, 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 blah. I go, that sounds super interesting. But email me the idea. Tim, I'm telling you the idea. No, email me the idea. Let me have my people look at it. They never like that. And then I'm going to pray about it. They look at me like, are you from another planet? You're going to pray about it? Yeah, I'm going to pray about it. Because I want to be, I'm going to break down a Tim story saying, I want to be in alignment to my assignment. No, 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 watch. I want to be in alignment to my assignment. Whew. I met with a famous businessman, and I can't tell you his name because he met with somebody from another country that you guys know who he is. It was a controversial meeting, but the guy met him. So I said about to this famous businessman, you know who he is. I said, what's that guy like? Because this guy's a dictator. And he said like this, he says, He's super smart, but
but he's only off that much. And I go, wow, it's not bad. He goes, oh, yeah, it's bad. Because that much at the beginning, and you keep going, that's really off. <laughs> See, some of you have been with people who are only off that much. No, no, I'm on today. Look, look, I'm dating this new guy. Oh, my God, he's amazing. He's only off this much. <laughs> Yo, girl, that's month one. Let's get him in month six. When I'm looking for the alignment to your assignment... I'm not looking just for your aspirations. I'm looking for the God idea for your life and for you to line up with it. Somebody clap your hands like you're getting this. Come on, keep clapping. Say, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Say, say, I'm getting it. Are you learning something? John 15. Can you guys put that up there? John 15. And I got... About eight minutes to finish this, but watch what I do with this today. And I have 21 pages of notes on this. John 15. It's up there? Okay. I am the true vine, and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that uh, does bear fruit, he prunes. Say, he prunes. Wow. Look at me. You know what's kind of difficult about this Christian thing? Is it's not just all like, woo. Sometimes you're being pruned. The gardener is the vine dresser. So I watched five different ministers speak on this topic. One guy from Calvary Chapel. The other guy, a guy named Andy Stanley. Another guy, my friend John Jenkins, with a great church of 19,000. I just texted him yesterday, told him that I was using some of his material. Then I, then I listened to a guy named Chuck Swindoll teach on this. John 15. This is so powerful. When you choose to be connected to Jesus, he says, I love you so much. I want you to produce much fruit. And if I see an area of your life that's not helping you to produce much fruit and stay in alignment with the assignment and do what you're called to do, then I'm going to prune you. When you were a kid, there were certain relationships that needed to be cut. As an adult, there were certain relationships that needed to be cut. As an adult, there are certain habits that needed to be cut. God, why are you pruning me? It doesn't seem fair. Watch this. Verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Oh, whoa, this is interesting. The world is saying, I could do it by myself. I'm my own man. And please stop saying you came from nothing. That's an insult to your parents. Some of you, your story is, I came from nothing. What, you lived in a jungle? <laughs> Somebody clap your hands if you hear what I'm saying. Come on, clap loud if you're catching this. Stop telling me you came from nothing. If you were in a foster home, that was something. If your parents were lower income, that was something. That's an insult on the best your parents could do, even if they were off. They gave you something. Too many people come to me with their amazing testimonies of, Tim, you'll appreciate this because you came from nothing. I said, no, I didn't come from nothing. I came from a mother who worked a shift and a half at, at Winchell's Donut Shop and a dad who did his best at Bethlehem Steel. My mother with a sixth grade education. My father with a 10th grade education. Somebody clap your hands and shout. I didn't come from nothing. 
They taught me discipline. They taught me to get back up. They taught me not to give up. They taught me about the things of God the best they could. You did not come from nothing. You have wealth. Wave, say, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So watch how powerful this is. He says, no branch can bear fruit by itself, Timmy. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches, little Timmy story. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much, much fruit. You will bear much fruit. What happened in my life? Get mad at me if you want. Whew. Roman, I got up today. I looked at like three fancy shirts. I saw this one. It's not even ironed. <laughs> it's a name brand designer. I looked. I got a steamer. I'm like, I'm not in the mood. Tim's story 10 years ago was always like whoosh, flowing. <laughs> Me, now, packing power with a wrinkled shirt. <laughs> Didn't shave today. How come? Don't feel like it. It's the holidays. Somebody may say, oh my God, you look better when you're fresh face. Well, see that 80% of the time. Look at my Instagram. <laughs> I, I even have very various filters of my beauty. Check it out. Pastor Page, what I'm interested in is I want to bear much fruit. So I close with this, and then we'll continue the weeks to come. There are four levels, and watch how quick I go through this. There's no fruit, say no fruit. Some fruit, more fruit, much fruit. That's how I want to look at your 2022. The question is, did you bear no fruit? Some fruit, more fruit, or much fruit. It depends on how much you are abiding in the vine. Oh, I got richer than ever. That's awesome. You may have gone completely off, and you're over there lost somewhere, bearing all kinds of fruit, some kind of fruit. I'd rather, I'd rather be in alignment to my assignment with a wrinkled shirt in the middle of the will. Come on, keep clapping. I'm done preaching. Clap your hands if you learned anything today. Clap your hands real big for him. Come on. Come on, keep on clapping. He's so awesome. Come on. Come on, how many of you want to bear much fruit? Wave your hand, much fruit. Much fruit is much joy, much peace. Much compassion, much gratitude, much giving, much impact, much impact, much impact. Diane Hudson, you said to me today, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I've been getting so many calls during the holidays. Grown men, my grown men friends, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. 
a famous manager of somebody you know, probably one of the top three movie stars, he said to me yesterday, thank you, Tim. You showed me the ways of God. Thank you. I'd rather do that, Roman. I do. I like all my little fancy projects. But you know what? I don't talk about them much. I literally talk about maybe 15% of what I'm really up to. I like making divine impact. I like helping somebody's son, somebody's daughter. I like seeing somebody get healed. I see somebody lost that's now found. How many of you want to make Jesus impact on this planet and bear much fruit? Clap your hands. Sing that song. I love you, Lord. You have led me through the fire, the darkest nights. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God I love you Lord for your mercy never fails for your mercy never fails me <laughs> all my life I've been held by your hands from the moment I wake up, from the moment that I wake up till I lay, until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sing it out with me today. All my life you have, all my life you have been faithful. Yes, I know. You have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God Yes, your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after me I say your goodness Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Okay, I want you just to listen to this. Wow, that's what I gotta say. You feel that, huh? I feel God. Clap your hands. You sense the Lord here. Come on. Don't you want to bear much fruit? I, I want to abide in the vine. Yes. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then can they call on the one they've never believed in? How can they believe in the one they've never heard? Do you know there's a lot of people that are Uber drivers and Lyft drivers that I lead to the Lord, I probably lead, lead to the Lord 70% of my Uber drivers. 70%. No, no, you don't have to clap. I'm just telling the truth. I pray over them. I prophesy them. I get them healed. I get them delivered. I've helped two Uber drivers get jobs because I feel like in that place, if they're going to stare at me like they do and say, you look like somebody. I'm not going to just say, yeah, I'm fancy. You see how fancy I am? You want to see how fancy I am? Look at all the fancy. No, I'd rather speak life into somebody. Because maybe I'm the only person that's ever explained Jesus in a way that they actually got. It says, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? So I want you to know that when we are a church... 
God uses regular people like us to send. I, want, I, I like to shoot with straight honesty. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and he was saying that, you know, this church bought this, and then this church bought that, and then this church bought that. Then I was talking to another friend of mine whose church cost $65 million to build. And they built it cash. And I thought, that's so interesting because we do well, but we struggle. So it, it's cool that, I, that there's other churches that have been going 30 years and they're like, yeah, we'll buy that property. We'll buy this property. Another friend of mine said to me two weeks ago, he goes, yeah, we own 100 acres. People were renting a school. Because we started a church in a very unusual time and got shut down for two years because of a pandemic. And I honestly believe this with all my heart, that God is calling us as a congregation to bring a Jesus message in a down-to-earth way where your friends could actually understand that this Jesus way works. Clap your hands if this is making any sense. Come on, clap real big. To all those people that watch us online, that you don't go to church, you come from different religions, hearing Pastor Stefan's messages, the lead pastor, hearing Pastor Page, hearing whoever we bring up here, teaching the Jesus message, people, it's worth it. But the Bible says, how can they hear unless somebody tells them? So we're the tellers, and when you tell this is what happens. You develop people. Development in God's kingdom means there's going to be spiritual growth, expansion, enlargement, and they'll blossom. This is my calling to the end of my life. I want to enlarge people. I want to grow people. I want to expand people. I want to help people blossom. Somebody clap your hands if that's what you want to do as well. Come on, people. So, but there's a, there's, a, there's a test. If you were to look at your expenses of how much you give to a church and how much you spend on other things. I was studying the, the prices of Taylor Swift concert tickets because I, I saw uh, two news articles on this. And so I, I looked at the price. Listen to this. To sit in the nosebleed section is $575. To sit in a, a better seat is $4,700 to see Taylor Swift. And that's before you go to the scalpers. People hear me. And to think that parents are going to make sure that their kids who love Taylor Swift show up there. And I like Taylor Swift. She's been nice to me. Hear me out. I'm just making a point. At the end of the day, what matters? People matter. The things of God matter. Life matters. Breaking addictions off people matters. Helping people get to a higher place matters. Clap your hands like this makes sense. Okay? So I'm going to do something. Of, as a real leader, when people, when I speak at these big conferences... Some of you have been with me. You see how they treat me. I've been there at this a long time. And they know what I, that I'm a man of authority and I don't play around. What I want to do today is I'm going to add, I have 20 envelopes. And I'm going to ask some of you to step up and help me so we can help our children's department. People, we have this thing called Little World Shakers. I need to expand it. We need to go after kids. We need to go after children. Are you with me? Down the line, I need a youth pastor so I can start keeping families that have children that are youth. Clap your hands like this makes sense. Okay? If you just think children and you just think youth, just go there. I'll raise money from some of my other buddies to do some things we need to do. Just hear me out. But I have these 20 envelopes. And for I want to I challenge you. And I'm going to ask you to pray about it first. For anybody willing to give 500 today or $1,000, I'm going to have you take the envelope from me. And by that, you're saying, Tim's story, I'm in covenant with you. 
as I sow into this church to change kids, youth, people, I'm believing it's coming back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Okay? So 500 or 1,000. Joseph, you have my accounts, so write 1,000 for me. Could you imagine I trust that guy with my accounts? My God, help me. Okay, so I want you to pray, and I'm going to stand in with the emblems and hand them out. And by that, you're saying, you know what, Tim? I like where you're coming from. Let's expand the kingdom. Let's build people. Let's change people, okay? Bow your head and close your eyes. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. Speak to us. Some will give out of their sacrifice, and some will give out of their surplus. In Jesus' name. Speak to people, speak to people to give today 500, 1,000 so we can finish up this year stronger. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. As she sings that song, if you're ready to give that amount, just walk to the front and stand here. I'm going to pray over you. you Just keep coming. And watch people come. I've been doing this my whole life. (laughs) Somebody clap like it's going to work. So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God All right, sing that real strong. Thank you. So my life you have been faithful I'm gonna pray up your businesses and watch what happens. I'm not joking. Oh, my you have been so there'll be so more of you just come up with every breath that I am able oh I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God one more time my life there's gonna be about two or three or more of you that need to just sacrifice you'll see come on up oh my you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God All you guys need to do in the front is uh, Brad is gonna hand you guys out pens If you can just fill out your information Uh, You can give by cash, you can give by card, you can give by check. If you want to hit the QR code, uh, Hannah and the media team can put the QR code up above us. I want to make sure we give you guys that option as well. You could text to give if you don't want to fill the envelope out. The text to give should be above uh, me as well. Should be coming up here any second, you guys. But Tim is going to pray over each and every one of you. And thank you guys for stepping up and stepping out as we finish the year strong. And let's just ask ourselves, what are, we, what are we reflecting on as we end the year? What's the reset we're praying for or looking for?
And for those of you online uh, that want to give today and that want to partner with us, you can do so in the chat section right now. There'll be a link for you guys to give. You can click on that. Thank you for your generous tithe, your offering that you guys give each and every weekend. For those of you in the house, if you need an offering envelope or you need a pen, if you can raise your hand and one of our ushers will make sure that we get you for our tithe and offering an envelope or a pen. So if you need an envelope or a pen, please raise your hand. I see you, Richard Kelly. Richard needs an envelope. Uh, pen or envelope, you guys? Pen or envelope, raise your hand. And don't forget, you can give by text. Text to give. Text to give Congregation Church to 77977. That is all one word. It'll uh, send you a text message back. Takes one minute to set up or you can scan. The QR code is not up there. If you have an offering envelope, the QR code should be on the offering envelope on the top in the middle. You can scan that QR code and you can give by QR code as well. Cash check made, made out to the congregation family. And thank you for your generous tithes and offerings. Any envelopes or pens, raise your hand. Take your right hand, just put it on your heart. I feel like God's healing us. Just say, dear Jesus, come into my life in a new and special way. Say, seriously, Jesus, thank you for pruning me. Holy Spirit, help me to be in alignment to my assignment. Now just take like two minutes and just be quiet. when I pray for them, I'm praying for everybody in the building because when we, when one steps out, you all step out. Favor on your businesses. Come, Fredlin, come closer. Favor, 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 favor. But when I pray for them, I'm praying for you. Favor, 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 favor. Favor, favor, favor on your businesses. Favor in your life, your family, your businesses. Favor, favor on your family, businesses. Favor and expansion, 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 expansion. Even two new states opening up to you. Favor and expansion. Favor and expansion in your home. Clarity in your home. Favor in your businesses. Expansion. Favor, favor from the East Coast to the West Coast. But also new doors opening in Europe for you. New doors in Europe. Favor, 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 favor on your life, favor on you, favor, 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 favor. As I said to you earlier, God has already gone before you with your businesses. He's already opening doors for you in different countries. He's sharpening you. He's sharpening you. Your gifting is, will be so unusual that people will be drawn they have to see what happened. Thank you for health in Randy's life that you restored his health this year. You pruned him. You healed him. We thank you, Lord, for the desires of his heart, for all the projects you've given him, all the open doors. We thank you, Lord, for Krista's life, that her art will be in the homes of amazing minds her art will bring healing to people we thank you lord for the healing gift that's on her that she is a healer a restorer of people thank you god for zara thank you for her life thank you lord that she turned pain to power and now she's an ambassador of healing and restoration thank you for bringing her book to the world thank you lord for miracles in your life and in your family's life 
Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing right now in her and her body, healing her. Thank you for Gail's family. Thank you, Lord, for the healing in her body right now. Strengthen her back, her hips, her wrists, her breathing. Thank you, Lord, for miracles, 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 miracles. And your house is a house of healing. Your house is like a healing center. That's why God put it up on that mountain. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Manny's life. We thank you, God, for his amazing family. That, God, you have brought his family into strong places, but they're going into beautiful places. I see it. I see them coming together like never before. Thank you, God, for Manny's new business endeavors, for his relationship. Thank you for the favor. Everybody put your right hand in your heart. Say, I am so blessed. Say, God's hand is upon me. He's enlarging me. You guys can go ahead and look up. Let's clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands for him. For you alone are worthy. Sing it strong. And then you guys can go back to your seat. And thank you guys. Paige, come and stand with me. And the ushers are going to pass the baskets. Ushers, if you could please pass the baskets. Just try lifting your hands to him. For you alone. How many of you, honestly, you don't have to clap. How many of you learned a lot today, just learned? Wow, right? How many of you appreciate my honesty about the fact that I used to boast too much? And if you hear it coming out sometimes, I'm still little Timmy from Compton. It'll pop out. But sometimes, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just excited. So I think it comes from different heart, different motives. But I... I got pruned a lot for a lot of years. I want to challenge you guys to come next week, okay? We're trying to build something. We're trying to build something. We lost two years. If you notice, you never saw a billboard. Tim Story has a church. There were never any signs. I went to a place that I knew not of, your Belinda. I didn't have one person, one family to help us start this church. We, have, we had nothing. We called people to my home. And we started like that because I felt like God just wanted to grow something organically. How many believe that in the next 12 months we can really grow a beautiful church organically together? Clap your hands, okay? So I'm, I'm here to tell you we need your help. So come next Sunday and let's just keep growing. Pastor Paige, what did you get for I today? I mean, first of all, the presence of Jesus is so strong. You guys... Don't you just feel the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Second, abiding in the vine to bear much fruit. I love the way you broke it down. It made it look so silly the other way. And God is God, and his word is true. You could take it to the bank. And when you just really said, abiding in the vine, and you will bear much fruit, yeah. and that's the only way you can do that. And then I just absolutely, you gave such a revelation. Oh, he's just a little off. Because we all accept that. He's just a little off. I mean, I've dated people, they're just a little off. But they took me in the wrong direction. 
And then my love and affections went the same way. Wow. You know, some women I'm talking to, women and men. And, but the way you broke it down, thank you so much. That, that was a phenomenal message today. Was that phenomenal? I mean, you're really fed. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Yeah. And, uh, and we pray for, uh, for Kelly. You know, she's got the virus, and then Stefan's been exposed, so they're home watching. But uh, we'll see you next week. But what a phenomenal presence. What a phenomenal message. Yeah, and again to the worship team. Rebecca, thank you for always just being you. Yeah. You, she's one of the best ever. Give her a big clap. And introduce your band for some of those that do not know your band members. Uh, we've got Wayne here on electric guitar. Give it up for Wayne. Give Wayne a big thank clap. Thank you, Wayne. Wayne's been with us a long time. And Manny Meza on the drums. And Manny. Manny, my golf partner on the, on the, on the drums. <laughs> but phenomenal leader. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for fulfilling the vision and, and being the founder of this church. And together... We're going to see the will of God and the fulfillment of this I think this we church. can pull it off, you We're, know, because yes. a lot of my friends closed down. One in three churches closed down during the pandemic. That's right. They're gone. Yeah. And a lot of my friends said, Tim, just go online. Just close it down. If you're not Saddleback Community, if you're not Mariner's Church, if you're not Stephen Furtick, then it's hard. You're going to have to, it's an uphill battle. But the Bible says, forsake not the fellowship together that's right there's something about being in the same room are you guys glad you came in the same room today but it, it's going to take all of us okay guys so next next sunday let's be in the same room and bring two or three people absolutely yeah thank you for being here your presence is very important i know you'll be continually come and uh i will be out there and uh we want to see you guys at the christmas party Come and celebrate together with us, okay? Don't just be sitting there going, Where do they get the tickets know. today? Today, well, we'll be right out there. So, okay. yeah, we have tickets for you, and uh, you don't have to. You could just reserve your seat today. You don't have to pay today if you don't need to. But well, I, I will be out there. But thank you so much. God thank bless you, you. Let's have a good week.